Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. It's my college football legend special. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. I surely, surely appreciate it today. Well, well, well. God has been good to me. And I tell you why I got one of the most special players that played this game in college football and also a special individual. He played on the 1990 Georgia Tech National Championship team. In my mind and in my heart, it's very undervalued in the state of Georgia and on the national level. He was a guy that played the safety position at a high level, man. Oh, my God. In the time that I really kind of fell in love with Georgia Tech, I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee at the time, living with my sister. New Year's Day. Haven't really watched a lot of Georgia Tech football during the season, but I know the 1990 season was crazy because they had five different teams that was number one. And Notre Dame was number one twice that year. And Tennessee had a pretty good team. They was in the top five. And Colorado had a special team. But that day I watched Georgia Tech play Nebraska in the Citrus Bowl. Of course, I know about the history in Nebraska, Johnny Rogers, Rich Glover, I am help, Javis Redwine, Roger Craig. But I'm saying Georgia Tech, the only thing I know about Georgia Tech is Bobby Dodd, because he played under the great Bob Neely. Then I know about Georgia Tech because when I was 10 years old, they played in the 1970 Liberty Bowl against Iowa State, and they had a quarterback named Eddie Machine that was off the charts that night. But as far as Georgia Tech football and outside Pepper Rogers, I didn't know nothing about the Tech program. But that 90 team, I watched that game against Nebraska, and I saw a special football team led by a special player. And for him to be on my show today, on our platform here, 100 Yards of Football, if you would have told me that 20 years ago, I would have said, you are insane. <laughs> Boy, God has really blessed me today. Mr. Ken Swillen is joining us. Before he comes on, I'm going to say his skill set, aggressive A+, plus. his range A+, plus. play speed A+, plus. the confidence level A+, plus. lateral movement A+, plus. and the athletic ability off the chart. See, Ken was a big safety about 6'3", 236, and run a 44140. I think he told me he was a 400 bench press guy and his athletic ability like a 40-inch vertical. That's why they named him Captain America in 1990. So it's my honor, my pleasure to bring him up. How you doing, Mr. Ken Swillen, Georgia Tech finest? I'm doing great, Vince. <laughs> uh, man, it's... Uh... That introduction, man, is, is something else, man. I tell you, that was uh, that was that was, that was that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. I tell you, it's just an honor and a privilege to be with you today. Um, everybody knows you as Mr. Football, and, yes, sir. Uh, you know, so I I, I am uh, just pleased and honored to be here with you today, and uh, and uh, and just 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 to share a little bit and and to talk a little bit, and you know, hadn't seen you in a while, but I'm, I'm glad that you're still uh, doing what you love to do, and that's talking Absolutely. football. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ken, we're going to get right to it, man, because a lot of people that I know personally, when they find out that I said you was going to be on the show, they wanted me to ask you some questions. So I'm going to start, man, back in your childhood, brother. What got you involved in football? Who were some of the coaches that brought you to the level that really put you on the national level as a national recruit? And one other question, somebody wanted me to ask you out of the state of Texas, my man, Ma Denham. Tell us about what it was like playing football high school level in rural Georgia back when you was going through high school. Because back in the mid 90s, I mean, mid 80s, football was really known from a high school level, like the state of California, the state of Texas. And like Atlanta Metro Atlanta didn't have that firepower like they did in rural Georgia. Right. So tell us what it was like from your childhood. Who brought you into football? And then tell us what it was like some of them nights in rural Georgia. Because one night I was doing my research. You know I live in Douglasville, Georgia. I'm about 10 miles from Villa Rica. 
And I talked to somebody in Villa Rica. See, I did my research on the king. And they talked about that championship regional playoff game that you had a relentless athletic 40-yard touchdown catch. And you took it 20 yards to the house. And they had like 20 scouts in the stand. And Bobby Ross was on the sideline. Talk yeah. about your life, brother. And that play there well, especially. Well, that was uh, that was a great play. But uh, to, to start from the beginning, um, you know, I probably started playing organized football when I was like eight or nine years old. Uh, my dad, I, he, he saw me playing in the yard. I, I have, we're blessed to grow up with my cousins and, um, you know, uh, my cousin is Pat Swillen and, and, and his brother, Daryl. And, you know, we had uh, other people around us, uh, Todd and Patrick Mayfield, my cousin, Jeff. We always got together and, and played backyard football. So my dad, you know, saw that I was pretty good, uh, even at a young age. And uh, because those guys were much older than me, I was always playing with them. And uh, so, it, I, it, it, you know, playing with somebody my own age was almost unfair because I've been playing, <laughs> I've been playing against, you know, older cats my whole, my whole entire life. And so, um, you know, I went and um, he, he signed me up and, um, the first team I would play for was called the Packers, and we were we we were pretty we were pretty good. It was a good experience, you know. Kind of kind of loved football all the way through uh, middle school, uh, all the way through that that Pee Wee process. Went to middle school, um, uh, played for uh, for a, a coach that really uh, changed my life. His name was Frankie Whitworth, and uh, Coach Whitworth was a uh, he was one of those old school kind of hard nosed guys. He ran about six or seven plays, but the six or seven plays he ran was, was ran to perfection. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things. We didn't throw a whole bunch, but um, we ran the ball and, and, and it taught us, taught us toughness and taught us, taught us to be pretty good. When I got to high school, I, um, you know, I, I played and lettered in all, all, um, all four sports. I ran track, uh, played baseball and, uh, played basketball and I played, of course, played football. But my first letter came in in baseball. That was the first thing I lettered in. In, in the ninth grade, I lettered in baseball, and um, so I, I was playing varsity baseball and everything was going well. And I ended up that football season. I ended up um, getting hurt. I, I broke my sternum, and um, mm. I took a hit that I was playing varsity as a ninth grader. So you know, ninth grade, you about fourteen years old. You know, you um, and you playing against some guys that's, you know, three or four years older than me, which was normal for me to be doing. But it was, you know, it was it was probably when my body wasn't ready physically to do it. And I ended up breaking my sternum. I took a hit, broke my sternum, uh, was out. And then at that point, I said, I'm not going to play football ever again in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. In my life, I said, no, nah, I'm done with football. I didn't care for the coach too much. And uh, he was. The program was not winning, so nobody wants to play for somebody that's. If you you coach, you're getting coached hard and you're winning, it's a different thing. If you're getting coached hard and you're losing, that's a totally different thing. You know, when you're losing, so uh, we were losing at the time, and um, and I, I decided I wasn't going to play. And all of a sudden, we had a coaching change. My would have been my junior year, or well, my sophomore year, going into my junior year, and Coach Rodney Walker uh, came and uh, changed the life of not just my, my life, but changed the life of a lot of guys in, in, um, in the black community, a lot of guys just in, in, our, in our hometown. Uh, it was just, uh, he came in with a uh, hard nose, kind of, you know, you're gonna do what I say. And, um, and, 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 you know, he had that mentality on him and he was the kind of people would play for. You know, he was just those that guy that would that would that uh, guys would play for, and and we 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 did, and and we won. Uh, uh, it was it was pretty good. My my junior year was probably it was his first year, and he came to me uh, doing football season. I'm doing <laughs> doing baseball season, and asked me if I was going to play football, and um, you know, because all the other coaches told him he's not going to play. He's not going to play. He, he he's already told us he we you know they came to my mama's and daddy's house, you know, trying to get me to play and. I said, no, I'm not playing. And my dad stuck with me and told, told him if he doesn't want to play, I'm not going to make him play. So uh, Coach Walker came and asked me if I wanted to play. I said, yeah, I'll play. I'll play for you. And um, I came out and uh, he put me at safety. And it was just a it was like playing center field uh, in baseball. So um, it was just a natural position. And, 
that's kind of uh, how I got started there. And uh, he was just a coach that kind of turned me loose and let me let me be an athlete and and and, and do different things. Uh, on the particular play that you're talking about in Villa Rica that night, that was my senior year. We had um, we had we were had just kicked the field where well, they had kicked the field goal to take the lead. They actually missed the field goal and they called the field goal good. And uh, so we had about about 30 or 40 seconds left to go in the ball game. Ran a couple of plays, got down to about the uh, you know we were on our 40 yard line. Uh, our quarterback last play of the game throws the ball deep. I see it coming, and I go into animated suspension. I, I, that's the first time, probably the first and last time it's ever happened to me. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing the ball coming, and all of a sudden, everything goes into slow motion. Uh, the ball is – I can see the revolutions. I can almost read the Wilson on side the ball. <laughs> on side the ball. And, um, you know, I got about three, got three or four guys around me. I go up. When I go up, um, it's almost like the ball just stuck in my hands. I come down. I, I pivot. And then I take off for the end zone, and uh, next thing I know, I'm in the end zone, and I'm I'm at the on the bottom of the dog pile where uh, our fans and our players and everybody had just just broke onto the field and just uh, to to celebrate. But it was just uh, that was probably one of the greatest plays that, uh, that I had been involved with up until that point in time. But it was just uh, it was just so um, it was so good, you know. My high school experience playing football uh, in the South. At that moment in Georgia, um, our little in, in a little country town, everything stops. Everything stops. Everybody comes out to the game. Everybody kind of, you know, they, they gravitate to it. You know, whether they played there, whether they didn't play there, you got you got good boosters, you got good good fan support. You know, so it was nothing to us there. Depending on the neighboring county we were playing, it was nothing to have 15, uh, 15 or 20,000 people at a game. You know what I'm saying? At, at, at times, you know, just depending on who you were playing. And, um, you know, high school football to me is, is probably one of the greatest things because you can, you you know, that's, it, it's true. That's when you, uh, that's when you fell in love with it first. That's when it was, you know, it, it was just pure and innocent and, you know, it wasn't about this, it wasn't about that. It was about, you know, playing on Friday nights. And that was as nothing like, I, you know, I play, I played, on the, on other days of the week, but that Friday night football is for it's for it's for real, it's for real. Especially in the South now, um, you know, you, you, Georgia's a hotbed. Florida's always been a hotbed, like you said. Oklahoma, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, uh, Texas and and California and all those have always been hotbed for uh, for um, high school football. But um, you know, at that time, Georgia, uh, you know, the city of Atlanta wasn't necessarily the draw uh, athletically as it is now. They've had, they always had ball players, but it seemed like they did just didn't take uh, take football as serious as they do now. Because right now, you know, Atlanta is a hotbed for 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 talent and uh, a good recruiting ground for 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 uh, for a lot of colleges to come and uh, and scoop these guys up. But it's just you know that that was part of my part of my beginnings, and um, you know that that's how it kind of started out. But I, I'm just so glad that um, you know you know I really have to pay homage and have to thank coach Walker for, uh, for all that he's done for me, did for me, you know, during that time, because he, uh, kind of, like I said, he changed the trajectory of my life. He changed, uh, the way we, um, uh, the way we felt about football and, um, and the love that we had for it. You know, he was very, uh, instrumental in getting not just myself, but, uh, a lot of our student athletes into college. If every, if anybody had a, had an inkling of uh, ability, uh, he had study hall. He had all these different things set up that we, guys could be eligible. Guys could be college ready and could could go to college. At least go to if not a, go to a JUCO or go to whatever you know That's to right. get an opportunity to, to continue their, their their career. And you know a lot of coaches don't put that kind of effort into it. And you know I talked to him some years later, and he was like, "Man, if if a if a kid is going to give me effort on the football field, that's the least I can do is to hey, help man. him." you know, get to a place where he can better himself or, or give him an opportunity. You know, he caught, he caught a lot of flack for it because a lot of the, a lot of the young men that he was helping was African-American young men, you know, and he, he's a white gentleman and, and, you know, and during that time, you know, it was still kind of, you know, I'm, I'm from a small country town. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was still <laughs> tense, you know, it, was, <laughs> it yeah. was still tense. And so a lot of the white people didn't like, 
that he was helping the black people the way he was, you know what I'm saying? And he was helping everybody. He was helping anybody that had talent. It wasn't just, it wasn't just black kids, but a lot of, you know, you know how it is when you look on the f- football field and you see, you, 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 it's like right. defenses nowadays. When you look out on the field, all you see is, you know, you see, you see black kids playing defense, you know, you see, you see them playing, you know, in, in those skill positions and all that good stuff. So he was instrumental in that. And, and for that, I, I'm, I'm just thankful, very thankful. Magical question. We've talked about this so many times. High school, senior year, schools coming from all over the nation. Alabama, Clemson, Texas, knocking at your door, Oklahoma. Tell the people 100 yards who bought. What was your main, main thing why you chose Georgia Tech? Uh, I really chose Georgia Tech because uh, I felt like um, – it was it was home for me. I already had a cousin. Uh, I had two cousins that were, had already been there and were there at the time. Um, I had one that was there at the time uh, and looked quite as a kept. Uh, Tacoa, Georgia, at one time was a hotbed for 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 uh, student athletes from um, from that area going to um, going to Georgia Tech all the way back from Lance Skelton to um, uh, uh, Brad Smith and uh, Anthony Harrison and my cousin Pat. And uh, just a uh, just a, um, a, a a litany of guys that just and a lot of kids just went to Georgia Tech, so it was kind of like home for me. But what really sold me was uh, Coach Ross's honesty and his his ability to to come into my home and to really sit there and really be honest about everything. Everybody else was trying to you know you are gonna do this, you are gonna play, you are gonna blah 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 this and other. Coach Ross didn't do that. He was like, if you earn the right to play, you'll play. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what I, I loved about him. And I, I still, you know, to this day, am thankful that, that he uh, he kind of left that path for us, you know, um, uh, uh, being being honest about it. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things. Like you said, I was being recruited by Alabama, being recruited by, by Clemson at the time. And Danny Ford was at Clemson. And, and uh, Coach Kerr was at, at Alabama. And, man, people don't know I was, oh, I was really close to, to Coach Curry was my last call before I called Georgia Tech and let them know I was coming. And it was a, I tell you, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough because I really loved Bill Curry. Bill Curry is a, is a man's man. Uh, he is one of those guys when, you, when he talks, it, uh, you can just hear it almost, it's almost like you hear from God when he talks, when he talks. So, you know, and you, and he, he has a way of drawing people in and making, making them listen to his voice. And he was just a great coach. And uh, he had coached my cousin Pat, and and it was crazy because when I was when I was 14, he'd never seen me play, never seen anything happen. I was at a Georgia Tech game. He comes up to me. He says, "I tell you what, you got a scholarship waiting on you right now. <laughs> if you if you come if you come to Tech, you got a scholarship waiting on you." So I, I you know whether he was saying it in just or, or not, I was 14. I I took it for real. So I went home and started working harder. <laughs> <laughs> start doing start doing different things a little bit better because uh, Coach Curry said that I could come to Georgia Tech, and uh, that made me get involved in my books a little more and all that good stuff. So it was just one of those, you know, he, he's just one of those coaches that I that I hold in high regard. Uh, you know, it's just unfortunate that you know when he was while he was at Alabama that he he uh, you know it, people in Alabama didn't like him because at that time he wasn't connected to the bath. You know, at that time, doing it, doing the, right. doing, the uh, doing football, you had to be. If you go coach at Alabama, you had to be connected to the bad so at some point in time in your coaching tenure. You know, and he had he didn't have that connection, so the people in Alabama didn't didn't necessarily take to him, and he only stayed there two years. But uh, I'm just uh, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm glad I chose Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was was a uh, what it was just far enough away from home, so that I didn't have to worry about my mom coming every every other day. <laughs> Yes, sir. Because uh, Clemson was like thirty minutes away, and Georgia Tech was a mm. was an hour and a half to two hours away. So, uh, you know, I chose Georgia Tech just so I could be just far enough away from home and and miss it just a little bit. That was, uh, at, I tell you what, that was the toughest day of my life. Probably leaving leaving home and and coming to Georgia Tech. That was probably one of the toughest times that that I've had because I'd never really been anywhere. And uh, mm. you get and coming from a little small town, you hear all the stories. All oh, the cities, this, the cities, that, and you know it's gonna it's gonna swallow you up and blah blah blah. And when you get here, you realize that people are people, 
And it's the same problems you have in a small town are going to be the same problems you're going to have in the, in the so-called big city. And heck, you know, you know it for yourself, Vince. Atlanta is can be extremely small. <laughs> yes, sir. As, as Absolutely. big as big as it is, it can still be extremely small. Okay, you get the tech. Your freshman year, y'all go three and eight. Come back your sophomore year, y'all use y'all lose three more games to open that season. Thirteen straight ACC losses. Yes, but y'all kind of end the season your sophomore year seven and four. Yes. You come into the 1990 season. You made a bold prediction. See, I did my research on you, Ken. You said that <laughs> we would go undefeated and have a shot at winning the national championship. You was the only one. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and all your teammates thought you was insane. <laughs> well, well, Vince, to be honest with you, you know, you know, going back to that, that freshman year, you know, we were three and eight, uh, we come back, and then we start off 0-3, and, and I, I picked up the phone and called my mom and was mm -hmm. like, hey, mom, I, 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 can't, I can't stay here. I, I cannot stay here. I, I, I think I want to go to Alabama. And she said, she said, no. She said, why would you do that? She said, you, uh, um, you, 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 you got to be a man of your word. You told Georgia Tech that you, you were going to commit to them and you're going to stay there. You're not going nowhere. And so I, I that that was kibosh in '86. I, I I got that out of my mind. So I, she, she and she told me that that day she told me she said she said you guys gonna turn it around y'all gonna start winning, and sure enough we started winning. And uh, uh, when we started uh, winning everything started kind of clicking together, and people began to believe the message that Coach Ross had. And like I said that sophomore year we went uh, seven and four, which was, you know, which at at during that time and we beat Georgia at the end of the year. So that was like, that was like uh, going to a bowl game for us uh, in, in today's time at seven and four, get you to a nice little bowl game. But uh, you know, we didn't, at that time, they didn't, uh, they didn't have as many bowls as they do now. And they, that wasn't a prerequisite that you, that you have to win six or seven games or however many games to go to a bowl. But um, that off season um, going into 1990, a lot of us, stayed on campus and stayed around um for for the summer and i i would dare say like maybe 80 percent of the team stayed on campus that summer and was doing workouts and guys was working out like i'd never seen before and in doing those workouts we started talking looking at the schedule we knew what the schedule was going to be we started looking at everything and we just started talking about how man, we, man, we can beat these cats, man. We can beat these cats. We can beat those guys. And then we looked at it. We said, man, everybody on schedule. We're not scared of anybody. You know what I'm saying? So we we could beat possibly beat anybody that we play. So we're sitting there, and <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden media day comes up. Uh, Coach Ross has uh, myself and a few other guys go to media day, and um, in the media day, uh, I was asked, well, coming off the seven and four season. How do you guys, uh, how, how do you view uh, your, you guys' chances for this year? Blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I believe that we can win every ball game. And um, uh, it was like a hush came over the room. Um, the, uh, you know, the reporter said, uh, you said you, say you believe you can win every ball game. And I said, yes, I, we, we believe we've been working hard. We've been doing this, that, and the third. And, you know, we, we're ready for the season and we believe that we can be have an opportunity to win every every ball game that, we, that we, we're in. I didn't back down from it, stayed right there on it. And uh, the next day, Coach Ross called me into his office and was like, Kenny, you can't say stuff like that. You can't say stuff like that. You can't say. I, he said, I, I'm glad you guys believe that, but you guys can't you, you can't put it in the media like that because they'll use it as for, for fuel and this, that, and the third. And I was like, Coach, it, it's going to happen. We, we, it, it's, it, trust me, it's, it's, I, that's just how I believe. That's how I feel. And and I'm sticking with it. So I never backed down off of it, even when coach reprimanded me. I never backed down off of it. And that was just one of those things that I believed because I was sitting at home uh, during the uh, during the Christmas uh, in the, uh, that previous year after we went seven and four. And I was watching the New Year's Bowl games. And I looked at my mama and I said, Mom, next year I'm not coming home for Christmas. Next year we're gonna be in a New Year's Day bowl game. And uh, she was, she looked at me. She said, "You believe that?" I said, "Yeah, I believe that." I said, "I know we will." And um, and so and it just happened just the way, <laughs> just the way I said. So uh, 
it was just um it was just, but, just funny. But it's funny that, back, that it happened that way. Going back to the junior year though, the, but you kind of set the tone from a defensive standpoint because two games that year, you had two interception returns, 92 yards and 75 yards that really got you on the map. But going into the 1990 season, when you look at your team, especially the defense, you had Colton Rudolph, Kevin Battle, Marco Coleman, Darrell Williams, Willie Clay, then yourself. And you started out with a tie with North Carolina State. But at the time, like I said, at night you had five different teams that were number one that year, Notre Dame twice, and like somebody didn't want it. But the Virginia game, I saw that game up close and personal, living in Knoxville. That's when I really knew about Georgia Tech. Herman Moore, Sean Jones at the quarterback position. Uh, basically, Sean Jones played for y'all. Sean Moore to right, play for right. Virginia. I'm sorry. Right. But that game, to me, really changed y'all course and really put y'all on the national level. But with the audience of 100 Yards Football, what was the key moment that changed you personally as a player when you knew that, hey, man, we might can win this thing and be on top of the mountain? Well, um, that game in particular was probably the biggest game to date because um, I think the we like you said we had uh, we had beat North Carolina State. We won all the way down. We won. We beat Clemson. Uh, Virginia had beat, just beat Clemson for the first time in like twenty something years of their history to, to become the number one team in the country. They were they were the number one team in the country when we played them that night, and um, they came out. It was electric, man. I I'd never been in a in a in a environment like that. It was really really uh, really electric. Uh, they um, they came out was moving the ball down the field like, and we didn't know we were like we were a good defense. Thought we were pretty good. And we just couldn't find, it looked like we were just a, a step slow, like we couldn't stop them. And um, there was a moment on the sideline between the offense and the defense. The offense scored the first time, and that settled us down. And once we settled down on the defensive side, we started making plays and started things started happening. Uh, that was a key play, um, like coming out of halftime. They had the ball coming out of halftime. We were down 28-14. They mess around and um, – Sean Moore has the ball in his hand. He's running, and his uh, guard lays out like to block somebody and kicks the ball out of his hand. We get a turnover, and from that moment, that uh, kind of changed the whole tenor of the ball game because that that put us at a one score ball game now. And then all of a sudden, it was their defense that couldn't stop our offense, and it was just one of those things. Um, you know that was. Probably at that moment, once I saw that part kind of, once our offense really started gelling and once we started playing well on defense, I thought we might have a have a, have an opportunity to have a chance. But early on in that ball game, if you watch it, it was oh man, it was it was crucial. It was <laughs> it was uh, it was one of those things where we thought I was like, doggone, uh, are they going to score forty points on us? We can't give up forty points on them, uh, you know. And um, then I like I said, our offense started scoring and they started moving and um, Coach Friesen and uh, those offensive uh, geniuses that we have over there, Sean started making plays and, you know, and all uh, Emmett Merchant and Bob Rodriguez and everybody on that offensive side started making plays. And the next thing you know, you know, we're ahead. And, um, you know, going into the into the last final seconds of the ball game, uh, everybody knows Scott Sisson kicks the ball and um, and uh, for the 38 uh, yard field goal and, and we go on to win and become number one. And uh, it's just one of those things. And it, it's crazy because the next week, after coming off of all of that, we, we uh, well, I think we tied, after, after we, beat, we beat Clemson in the next week, we tied, North Carolina was a tie that we had. Uh, that was a week I did not play because I got hurt in the Clemson game and was actually hurt during the Virginia game. But, you know, I, it was one of the games where I felt like I couldn't miss. I couldn't, I, I, would, I would do anything to play, and uh, I did. <laughs> and uh, my body's uh, paying for it now because, I you know, you know, we took, took measures to kind of, uh, be able to play, but uh, you know it's one of those games I'll never forget. One of those one of those things I never, um, ne you know, always realized that it was a, um, it was just, it was kind of a miracle season. It was kind of one of those things that you just, you don't realize, you know, when you when it's, when you're going through it, how great it was, until you can do time, things like this and look back, 
and really um, understand that you was in a golden age of, of college football. You was in a golden age of, of Georgia Tech sports, period. Because at that time, the, the basketball team had went to the uh, Final Four. The baseball team had went to the NCAA. Uh, we had um, golf was, um, uh, was, was doing well. And um, it just every sport over at Georgia Tech at that moment was, was, was doing its thing. And it was just a golden era uh, of Georgia Tech sports and athletics. Final question, man. I could keep you on for hours talking about your career, Georgia Tech. But the final question, what can you tell the people out there and take from that 1990 season, how special it was to you to be on that team that won the national championship? I mean, it, it was it was very, very special, Vince. I tell you, um, you know, when you you don't realize how, like I said before, you don't realize how things are until you kind of look back and you realize, you know, you did something, you was part of something great, you was a part of something special, uh, you was a part of, um, you know, uh, um, something that can't be erased. You know, what I'm saying they can do a lot of things, but they can't erase. They can't erase that. You know, what I'm saying, and the and the brothers that I have that I gained from from those moments. Um, you know, it, it it only not only does it teach you how to do uh, how to play football, but it teaches you life lessons because uh, life is tough. And things are going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be hard at times. But um, you can always get up. You can always fight. And you might not always win. But it's something about teaching you the, uh, those, intestinal, those intestinal fortitude type things that will, you know, that will keep you going and keep you moving toward the goals that you set. You know, and football has, has been an invaluable part of my life. And, you know, I, I still love it to this day. You know, and I, I, I look at it and I, I'm very uh, thankful and very appreciative uh, to the good Lord for, for blessing me with the ability to play and, you know, and, and blessing me with with the, with the mindset to still love it, you know, and uh, just I, I wish I had one more play, <laughs> you know, and that's what I tell folks all the time. You don't know when you're playing, you don't know when it's going to be your last when it's going to be your last one. So you, you, that's why you go all the, all out and play the uh, the best you can, because. You know, the bus stops sometimes for you in high school, sometimes in college. Sometimes you get to the pros and you're lucky. You might get a cup of coffee here or there. But, you know, after a while, you, everybody has to do something real. <laughs> everybody, you can't play this game forever. And that's one thing. It's not like baseball or basketball where you can play a long, long period of time. But, uh, you know, so when, while you're out there and you have the ability, you have to give it your best shot. Well, Man, I'd like to say thank you for coming on today. I want to say this to the Georgia Tech Nation, Maxie Bond, Louis Stafford, Pat Swilling, Billy Lockridge, Chris Brown, George Morris, Bill Curry, Eddie Lee Ivory, Ted Roof, Pepper Rogers, Ken Weisenhunt, Lamar Wheat, Ray Beck, Leon Hartman, I know all y'all were great football players, all y'all great All-Americans, but for my money, my time, researching your program, it's been no better football player, and he took y'all to the last member of national championship at Georgia Tech. And to your dog fans, I hate to get a shot in here. Y'all haven't won one since 1980. This man right here won one in 1990, the arch travel. So the Georgia Bulldogs, please finish the chapter. But to my man, Mr. Ken Swilling, one other thing. When I think about you, man, when you was at Georgia Tech, Captain America ran that number one number, I'm going to take you back in time. I had a band I liked out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Midnight Star. The two brothers who led the group, Reggie Calloway and Vincent Calloway. And they had a song, Night Rider. Ken Swillen was the night rider on that 1990 Georgia Tech team that made it special. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it. I'm Vincent Turner here, 100 Yards Football. Thank you to Mr. Ken Swillen and Georgia Tech. Y'all need to appreciate this, man. He's undervalued. To our producer today, Mr. Logan Landis, for making it happen. Thank you for watching 100 Yards Football, and y'all be blessed.